a quick bit of time travel here. Sh are you sure it wasn't a long bit of farting? Do you have gas, Mr. Last? It's the machine. It's the uh, time <laughs> travel. Phew. Is that the smello smello vision we got along with this? Anyway, I tried to set this thing up. Well, we'll try to set this thing up. We are traveling uh, one way or the other, I forget, <laughs> to talk to you about something that everyone's talking about without actually doing the full review, which we'll be traveling back in time to go do. But on Monday Night Raw this past week, Jim, a reference was made by one CM Punk to the drive through and the experience Although he ordered it, the experience in the drive-through, but that's a that's another story. Well, that's that's subjective. People can pick which one they want to go first. There's so many to go around, but you have completely confused people that might be listening to this on YouTube at this point, Mister Last, without having knowledge or cognizance of the fact that this will be dropped into the podcast later on, as you mentioned. But basically, people will not quit worrying us to death. As Aunt Lola used to say on the Twitter machine about, please say something about this. Please say something about this. So we're we're a, a, a gonna do an episode of your program, one of your a punk mentionee there. The drive through. The drive through. Been, that should have been the first show he mentioned. Well, I don't know what we're happened. gonna we're gonna do an episode of that in in less than twenty four hours. But we're going ahead and addressing this hot button issue. Just to get the people off our bow, or at least off of Twitter, to so they can go back to their homes and their lives and their families. They can get out of the streets. I mean, this thing is goddamn. There's people with all bonfires everywhere. Where are you seeing this? Well, it's on the news. What news? Well, WCPQT Poughkeepsie had a big piece on it. But there's a lot of, well, if you if you take Twitter as a reference for anything, and boy, in that case, I've got some oceanfront property in Nevada to sell you. But uh, this has been the big issue here. I'm, I'm Trendy McTrenderson again. People have blown up on both sides of the issue. People who are upset that I have wished death on their favorite wrestlers wish I would die. I just want to let that one sink in for a second. And, of course, the people who listen to the program, of which there are, there are legion, as we demonstrably can be easily proven, this is not hyperbole emitting from my sense of the magnitude of me. It's just factual, folks. A lot of people listen to this thing, apparently more than we realize, Brian, and we're pretty goddamn on top of this thing. And, uh... And they're, they're taking the pro and con stance on whether I ought to be elected president of the United States or whether I ought to be burned in effigy in every town square in America with a population over 2,500. There's no in-between on this issue. And, and so we thought we would do a little, just a little statement to put, you know, is, is this like a fireside chat? Do we have to put the nation at ease? Get the people back to work. Now that I think about it, what is this? If we're not reviewing the actual segment, what are we doing? We are we are commenting on being commented upon because it became <laughs> a fucking thing. And I don't know what's the matter with all these people. But again, it, it, here is what happened for, for those of you who may have been living under a rock or a stone or living a life free to pursue your other interests and don't hang on all this stuff. The other night on Raw... About 36 hours ago here as we sit here, I guess now or so, uh, Punk was advertised to be on the show as well as, you know, we knew we were going to see Cody and we had a whole bunch of big stuff was going to go on. And since I knew Punk was going to be on the show, even I was running around the house is what I was doing because it gets dark later. And I was trying to get all of the evening things done because normally I don't watch Raw live, as you know. I record it so I can zip through much of it later on, right? But I had it on in the TV room so I'd keep an eye on if Punk came out. And I swear to God, I was almost there. And I, I guess I should back up a little bit. Harley's been stopped up past couple of days and then she, she was stopped up for a couple of days over the weekend eating normally but not pooping and then the moment came and it was ugly and required 
bathing of her in the in the in the sink with the you know liquid soap and the scissors and the whole thing. Why do you need to tell this story? Well, because it it ties into what's going to go on here. And then she w- she didn't poop again for another day and a half. So we knew there was an explosion coming. And we wanted to make sure it happened outside the house. So right about the time that Punk was about to come out, she gave me the signal and I took her outside and she wandered around and it took forever. But boy, boy, howdy. Again, it was even worse. And and what happened was that we had to take her around back to the patio and then do some more trimmage and do some more wiping and comforting of the baby before we could even bring her in the house. And by the way, she's feeling better now. She's gotten all regular and everything. But what happened was I never went back to Raw. So the next morning I get up and I'm trending and people are inflamed and goddamn whatever the fuck's going on. And I had to catch up on this because, and one guy on Twitter got it right. He said, you know, Cornette's trending again and he's probably out taking Harley out for a Russo and doesn't even know it. That was exactly what was happening. That's how it tied in, Brian. It's a great story. So anyway, what happened was Punk came out, was doing his live in-ring promo that we will cover fully when we record your program tomorrow when we revamp, revamp or review all of the momentous occasion of Raw. But he's doing his promo and he happens to mention, he said, everybody, and this is true, everybody's got to talk about him because think about this. Everybody's talking about us because he talked about us. And since everybody talks about him and everybody talks about what he talks about, well, they, you can see there's a domino effect here. And as he was mentioning his promos and et cetera, that everybody had to talk about him to get attention. And he's looking at Pat McAfee down there at ringside. And he said, you, Pat McAfee. He said, I understand you've, got a program daily program i don't not a regular listener i listen to the experience in the drive through but you had a guest on your program pat mcafee and went right back to it and that's why again he's a master he's a cunning linguist because this is not inside smart talk that confuses the fucking story and half the audience and they don't understand because it's the crux of what they're trying to get together. It was not meant for that audience or for that story or that promo to be an aha gotcha moment. It was a little drop in for those of you who know, you know, and the people who love us, as we said, there are many. They got a pop out of it and the people that hate us and boy, (laughs) ha ha! There's a bunch of those two. Their heads caught on fire. But he, at the same time, went right back to the put. But you, Pat, so the delivery was perfect. Because it was, a, what do the kids call it? An Easter egg, Brian? Where it's dropped in well, there. I mean, not really. An Easter egg. It's not just thrown out there so obviously, I don't think. Well, it, it was there. It, it was a subtle little jab for some people and a nice little wink at other people, and it didn't detract from their story because he went right back to it and started making the points he needed to make. That's how you fucking talk to the smart audience while at the same time not deterring yourself from your, your program and your, your meaning of your story. But nevertheless, and by the way, everybody not only got mad at me for existing and for you and I guess for existing with me, but now, oh my, that punk, he listens to those that, oh my God, oh, he's horrible. More on that later. But McAfee emerged unscathed, by the way, but I'll bring it up because when when he told Pat McAfee, punk did, he said, I listen to the, I don't listen to your program, I listen to experience in the drive through McAfee said, understandable. Because I'm sh- I'm sure Pat's listened to a program that we've done or two in the past here, because most people do in this wrestling environment that we find ourselves in. But uh, I got to think that Pat McAfee would uh, agree with some of our philosophy on wrestling, because, you know, he's from Indianapolis. He actually 
engaged Rip Rogers to train him uh, before he got in the business. So he had a solid basics and fundamental, which is why he's overperformed for the amount of matches he's had. But, Bri, you are, are well aware if you, about philosophy of wrestling most of the time, if you ask Rip Rogers and I a question, you'll probably get similar answers. So I'm sure Pat has, it's, he's no stranger to some of our opinions one way or the other. Well, who knows? He's a busy guy. Maybe he's just trying to look trendy. Well, I mean, he he does, you know, he does hang out with some of the cool cats, though. He really does. He's, he's you know, he's not just one of these the cool pretend cats. celebrities. He hangs out with the cool cats and, and the hip Cliff? kids. Yes, even him. Yes, he's a rapper, right? Yes, I've, I heard his last fucking record. Really? You heard the record of Heathcliff, the cat? Yes. Yeah, right. what, oh, is, is he, he's one of the cool cats. That's right. I'll tell you, is he's... Is it, spelled like, is it spelled like K-A-T-T? Heathcliff the cat? Uh, no, but if he leaves the record label, it may have to be just because of trademark issues. Well, as we're confusingly similar, sometimes we'll get by. But anyway, back to our topic. So after that mention, then they went on with their the rest of the interview presentation, which was brilliant. One of the greatest segments on modern wwe television in a while but we'll review that at a different time but that lit twitter and the what are the other things called that these people congregate on and are drawn to like moss to a flame to to uh, vent their opinions to the world the, the the reddits and things and message boards the mirror the mirror yeah, well it's the same thing in a lot of cases and like I said, many were for and some were again. And boy, the ones that are again are again, again, again. And they hate me and they loathe me and they despise me. I've been called a phobe and an ist. But I'll tell you one thing, Brian. One name that some guy called me on Twitter that I refuse to put up with, that I will not ever admit to being and that I'm highly offended by, he called me a homophone. A homophone, Brian, and I'll have you know that I'm not now, nor have I ever been, one of two or more words that are pronounced the same but differ in meaning and sometimes spelling. And I resent that implication. I, sir, am not a homophone. But, Ed, what is the matter with people? And it, 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 it tickles me to death. By the way, thank you again to all, all of you people who, as I said, that was a real thing. He wished death on so-and-so's. I wish he'd die. I, I appreciate your venom and your hospita uh, hospitality, your hostility. It does my old retired heart good to see that I can reach out once again through the the airwaves of life and touch your fucking taint in such a goddamn annoying manner that you'd rather goddamn see me go over the edge of a cliff than a million dollars land in your front yard. I enjoy that. But what the fuck is the matter with how can anybody get this worked up to the point that they were mad at him? Punk, he's not the person I thought he was if he listened to that shit. God, is everybody that listens to Michael Jackson still uh, interested in a improper fashion with underage minors? Maybe that wasn't even a best. That's not a really great analogy. Harrison, that I you putz. Play. What was that? <laughs> well, I'm offended. <laughs> I'm a, no. You homophone. <laughs> but nevertheless, what the fuck? If real problems came up in these people's lives, how would are they the kind of people that you have to call the authorities to go tackle in the middle of the street and fucking restrain and take somewhere involuntarily if they get a fucking speeding ticket? If something really happens in their life? The other thing that makes it all even more ridiculous, as regular listeners know, as anyone who actually knows you as a person knows, I'm a you know, liberal from the Northeast, you're the most liberal fucking person I've ever met. Yes, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's the other thing. They're saying that you are against all the things that you are absolutely not against. Yes. <laughs> it's insane. He's such a goddamn... And meanwhile, they're worshiping the fucking trampoline cowboys that are birth deniers and fucking right-wing conspirists and fucking, in some cases, 
uh, their elders contributed to the fucking tr- attempted overthrow of the government. <laughs> Jericho. <laughs> uh, Jericho. Uh, <laughs> who's, did I have any blood relatives at the insurrection? For those of you who are worried that I'm some kind of right-wing lunatic. Did you have oh, any distant relatives there? Um, I, I don't think I have any more distant relatives. <laughs> But anyway, so, but, and once again, if a real problem, if a real problem happened in these people's lives, how would they handle it that they are so mad that they have to sit there and type this, oh, my head's on fire because of this guy listening to this podcast and this guy's podcast, he says horrible things about all my favorite wrestlers. He's horrible. He wished her that he would die. I wish he'd die. I wish he'd die. See, that's the thing. You're all these things that they want to say is the worst thing in the world because you hate their favorite wrestlers or because you critique their favorite wrestlers. I even see some people just come out and say, he makes fun of them. Yes. (laughs) What? You can't make fun of stupid? Come on. You can't make fun of things you see on these wrestling shows? Come on. They, They make fun of my wrestling business. That's why I make fun of their attempts to be involved with it. So we're even. It, at worst, I'm just better at it than they are, right? I mean, is that... Have I sat outside any of these fucking people's houses in the car late at night that I've talked bad about and fucking, you know, goddamn done the old fucking drive-by thing where I'm dr- driving around their houses like, I'm going to get you shaking my finger. What the fuck? The old drive-by thing. Is that what you call it? Well, I mean, the old drive around the house thing, and you know, you're always saying that old thing. Yeah, Yeah. I'm not talking about an actual drive-by. Well, I'm not up on that lingo. I don't do those things. (laughs) (laughs) The fuck are you doing? I hate Kenny Omega. (laughs) Blaka, (laughs) blaka. I have not advocated for anyone to fucking... Catch these people walking down the street and fucking give, even give them a tongue lashing. I give them enough of a tongue lashing. Uncle Dave gives them different kinds of tongue lashings. But uh, I'm just a- expressing my opinions and said, oh, he's so horrible. He's so bad. Well, you know, the truth of the matter is we saw a pretty, obviously a pretty large audience come out and comment on this, but I don't think the Jim Cornette haters was a bigger audience than the people that were just happy that Punk came out publicly as a listener of the show. That's the thing. Other listeners felt, you know, good about the fact that their favorite show, the number one show, the best fucking show, that we're over here and here CM Punk listening. But the reaction from the anti-Jim Cornette people is exactly why some other wrestlers who do listen won't publicly acknowledge it. Because of the lunatic fans. Well, yeah, and also, these are the people on the Twitter machine and their their ilk that, unfortunately, in my opinion, make the Republicans feel normal. Because they're so batshit, the other, just ridiculously, illogically, maniacally, so fucking hand-wringy and cringy and pearl-clutchy and fucking whatever just from shit that other people tell them that's not even the fucking case. And you, when there's a real problem going, that's why I said a real problem earlier if these people encountered a real problem, Brian. Well, there's a goddamn criminal lunatic trying to be elected president again. And so if they're so offended about me being so fucking whatever the fuck I am, ist or ist or ismed or phobic or whatever, they ought to really be mad about that because all those people really are. So what are they doing about that? Are they marching in the streets or are they just on Twitter complaining about a guy listening to a wrestling podcast? Yeah, get off Twitter and help rebuild a bridge or something, you idiots. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Don't even get me started on the bridges. Did you see that video of the boat? Yes. I've driven across that bridge in Baltimore when I used to go up in that neck of the woods, now only accessible by rowboat. Um, it, and fuck, that's what I'm telling you about the bridges here in Louisville. Oh, let's just close this son of a bitch down right now in the middle of the day for checking and tests. And it will fuck. 
And this thing, but the boat fucking runs into one fucking pillar, two miles of it, goddamn collapses. How was that fucking put together? And it wasn't like the boat was even trying. He just, they lost power and that, and the whole goddamn, what the fuck? See why I don't trust this shit? But anyway, back to this program. The point is, is speaking of building a bridge, Punk has apparently built a bridge with a lot of people that may not have been watching Raw in a while. Did you hear the number? Maybe it's just because he mentioned us, and, and as I said, because of the magnitude of us. But maybe it's because if CM Punk farts in the wind, people smell it across the country. Every time he talks, they want to listen. Every time he says something, it gets a reaction out of people. And I've, I told you right before we started recording this, I'm trying to figure out how to express this, but you, we saw the quarter hours. We've seen that as of yesterday afternoon. As many people joined watching Raw for the CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, uh, Pat McAfee, uh, fucking Seth Rollins at all segment, as many people joined watching Raw as watch Collision and Rampage in totality. And it, and then it, and it went right back down as soon as he was done, by the way. Well, we're not going to do all the ratings here, but real quick, Monday Night Raw, and I have to say this was an excellent episode, maybe the best episode of Monday Night Raw I've seen in a few years. It was just a great episode. Boy, howdy. This segment was the 9 o'clock hour, quarter 5, Quarter three, it began in quarter four. Quarter three, 830, 845. The end of, uh, oh no, the entirety of Ricochet versus JD McDonough with two ad breaks, which did 1.7 million viewers. The finish of that, the beginning of the CM Punk promo with an ad break in between. Quarter four, 1.86 million viewers. Quarter five, the nine o'clock hour, the Punk Drew McIntyre Seth Rollins confrontation. 9 to 9.15, 2.2 million viewers. And then the next segment, Shinsuke Nakamura with a promo and ad break. Candice LeRae versus Ivy Nile. Oh, boy. DIY, The Awesome Truth and New Day's Backstage Angle. An ad break in the beginning of DIY, DIY, DIY versus New Day, 1.77 million viewers. Bro, <laughs> So from from start to finish, uh, because the, he was only in part of that quarter four, but it still ticked up, and then the full quarter five at the top of the nine o'clock hour went from one point seven something million to two point two million, and then back down again. And it was two point two, by the way, was by far the highest quarter of the entire program, which included The Rock. Well, I have an article here, uh, Dave Meltzer reporting, CM Punk, very close to the people at the top of Nielsen. <laughs> I'm lying, everyone. It's not a real thing. Don't report that on one of your clickbait sites. Don't have it say that Dave Meltzer really reported that. Don't, don't report that he says that until he thinks of it and says it. I, I mean, that... <sighs> you know what I'm happy about? Someone who I have a great deal of respect for in the wrestling industry texted me about it. And I said, you know, because I didn't, you know, what are you supposed to say? I there's nothing really to say. Oh, it's cool. You know, it is. I said, the one thing that makes me happy, the mention happened in the middle of an excellent segment. The mention, yes. it wasn't just a lot of viewers there. There were a lot of viewers there for The Rock, This Is Your Life. <laughs> there were a lot of viewers and the segment was awesome. So I'm happy about that. And, uh, you know, again, it was a, it was a little, a little drop in there, not a pipe bomb, maybe a stink bomb, just for the people who know, you know, and a little wink, Neutron wink but, bomb. Oh, but it didn't take away from the, from the story at hand and which they told remarkably. And, you know, there's interest and you can imagine all these matches that they're opening up that Punk is going to be uh, hot for as soon as he's back with a variety of different people. And he's, they're still keeping a presence and commentary. And we talked about that, that that might be a way to 
reintroduce him when he's ready or maybe before he's ready, wink, wink, whenever that may be, because he's talented at that. But the point is they got it. No wonder Tony Khan is still mad at old Jungle Jack off. Because look at this. He'd still be there, still stuck in that quagmire. Biggest still star doing, they have. Well, he would still be doing somewhat numbers for Tony, but he wouldn't be doing numbers like this because it's not possible for Tony's company to do numbers like this. He would also be selling a lot of merch for Tony. I mean, there's a lot of things, but I'm sure Tony made a, the best decision he could make. But it worked <sighs> out the best for CM Punk. And, <laughs> you know, you say it sets up a lot of matches, and it does. And I'm sure when those matches are on the big events, I'll really like them. More than anything, again, the trend, especially in the Paul Levesque era, and I'm loving it. Because even though there's some boring matches you don't want to watch, even the look, Swami's going, <laughs> even the look has gotten better. Some of the camera shots, the shot when The Rock came out, we'll talk about on the drive through the shots during his confrontation, because Drew was at the commentary table, everything felt fresh and live and new. Yes. The match They're, is getting set up is great, but it's more more verbal confrontations that aren't just bland. That's what I like, and that's what viewers like, too. And they seemed like they were interacting with each other rather than standing there for three minutes waiting for their line to hop in unnaturally, right? And everybody was a little sharp. And, and uh, you mentioned when I'll be Seth and you be punk. I'm Seth. Would you like to hear what I think? Nope. Exactly. Just nope. No one ever says that in a promo. It was yeah. amazing. It, but and and that's the thing also is they are playing with camera angles. It looks more fucking high tech network quality. They're getting a little cinematic presentation in these crowd shots and these beauty shots of the arenas and the the fucking shot they do with the drone or whatever. Sometimes when they go in the door of the place and see and open up and see all the people and guys like Punk who are naturals at communicating and he, he knows how to work television. He knows where the camera is and what, you know, what it's going to look like when he's on TV. So he's not just fucking moping around. But anyway, that's how you draw numbers, folks. Just get on television on raw and mention the experience and the drive through. You're the highest rated quarter hour on the, on the whole show. And if you're CM Punk. That's right. And uh, with that, I think we have covered this issue and so much more <laughs> for almost 30 minutes now. So we'll, <laughs> we'll get back to the drive-thru. We will not time travel back instead. Just so anyone knows, anyone who complains about us, you never ruin our day. I'm over here playing music like it's a silent movie. So let's go back. I, I wish it was a silent movie when you play music.